Alrighty. Well, good morning. Needs don't stop just because there's a virus or that we're stuck at home. The needs that these five ladies provide are special and help an incredible part of our community. This is meeting with extraordinary minds, our special needs our special needs community, helping our special needs community, excuse me, throughout the pandemic and beyond. I'm Stephanie Bohart, the Director of Business Success for Revolution Mortgage, and I am so excited to have these women joining us and sharing what they do to our community. So I'm going to introduce everyone. Starting off, we have Nicole Klein, um, Nicole Young Klein, excuse me, owner of Young Talkers, the Adult and Pediatric Therapy Clinic. Hey, Nicole, how are you? Good morning. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for joining us. We have Carly Dorsey, occupational therapist with Motivate Occupational Therapy. Good morning, Carly. Good morning. We have Sarah Pope, CEO with SOS Healthcare. Sarah. Hey, good morning. And then we also have from SOS, Stacey Lyon, Marketing um, Director. Good morning, Stacey. Great morning, and, everyone. And then we have Leslie O'Neill. She is the Holistic Nutritionist Program Coordinator with SOS as well. Hey, everybody. So, thank you all so much for joining me. I know that you guys are all still incredibly busy. Um, your business is still being um, in working nonstop because, you know, needs don't stop. So I wanted to get each one of you to kind of just give us an overview of what your agency does so our viewers can um, understand and kind of what you do for them. So I'm going to start with you, Nicole, if you want to tell us kind of what Young Talkers does and, you know, what's going on. Yeah, um, we provide um, speech therapy services um, for children and adults. Uh, along the Grand Strand. Um, we have um, two different offices. We've got one in Polly's Island and then one in Myrtle Beach um, where the patients you know, can come to the office. We provide services. We also do um, baby net, uh, birth to three in the homes. Um, we go to some schools. And so basically we're just providing for children who have different types of um, speech needs, mm -hmm. feeding needs, um, you know, anything kind of along those lines, we are working with those children in the office. We work with them one-on-one -on -one, and the families come in, we have observation rooms or they come into the room. So we really try to involve the families um, with, you know, with the treatment and everything that we're doing. Um, so that's kind of, in a nutshell, that's kind of, uh, that's kind of what we do in the services we provide. Okay. And Carly, can you tell us a little bit about Motorvate? Because this is a new one that I hadn't heard of. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm the owner of Motivate Kids OT, and we provide occupational therapy services for children that have sensory concerns, um, that have motor concerns. Um, we don't have a brick and mortar clinic. Instead, we go where the child is. So it's whether it's in, their, in the school or in their home. Um, we might go out into the community to a, a summer camp or um, a daycare. So we go to them and we work with, um, with children that have a wide variety of deficits, whether it's um, attention, whether it's a large motor coordination delay, a small motor coordination delay, um, or um, anything from even handwriting legibility. So we work with a wide variety of kiddos. Wow, that's awesome. That's so nice to you go to them because I know that's usually a big struggle a lot of times. Mm -hmm, all right, and Sarah, can you um, let us know a little bit about, I know all the stuff you do, but a little bit about SOS Healthcare? Um, yeah, sure. We provide um, services to families and children and adults that have autism and intellectual disabilities. Um, our programs really are from diagnosis until, and so we cover the lifespan um, with about 14 different programs that we offer. Uh, most of the programs are within the Grand Strand area but we also serve um, children in Charleston, Tri-County, and um, we serve adults in the Greenville area. Um, so our programs are really generated so that we can support independence. And so we start young at diagnosis and we provide ABA therapy, um, which is applied behavior analysis therapy. And um, we have about 75 children in that program. Um, and then we have a lot of fill-in programs for children that are, you know, address social needs and recreation needs and safety. And, and then we have um, a variety of programs for adults. So anywhere from life skills training to holistic health programs, um, 
We have some work sites at Darlington and Conway um, Medical Center um, where we're providing some training on the job. Um, and then we provide job coaching in the community to adults that are ready to be employed. So lots of different programs um, across all different ages. Fantastic. And then um, Leslie, I know you work for SOS and it's, um, I know it's, a, I don't know how new it is, but it was new for me to hear that you were over there. So what exactly are you doing over there? Uh, yeah, so it is new for me. I've been there about three months and uh, I'm basically uh, running and coordinating the holistic health program, which is a, a pretty wide variety of things that we're trying to teach uh, both the children and the adult population, um, self-advocacy, body awareness, nutritional needs, exercise, um, self-care, general self-care, especially, um, you know, the dietary needs are special for um, this community and this population. And, you know, how to shop, how to cook, um, how to understand body awareness so that they can better relate to the medical professionals on how they're feeling. And really, um, I see it as really a, a self-advocacy program where they are learning how to take control of their health and then be able to express those needs um, to their families, the community. And, um, and eventually, I mean, the goal is to get everybody to be able to be self-sufficient at, at the level that they can be um, with their own personal health. Yeah. I mean, I've definitely seen that firsthand is that your internal like health and your gut health and your, you know, your health health, you know, definitely affect everything that goes on in your, uh, your mind and your mental capacity. Yeah. All right, Stacey, what do you do over at SOS? So good morning, everyone. Uh, as the marketing director, I am mainly focused on fundraising. Um, the CDC just put out new numbers a few weeks ago that the autism statistics are now one in 54 children are diagnosed annually. And even more shocking than that, one in 34 boys are diagnosed. Uh, girls are one in 44. So boys are four times more likely than girls to receive a diagnosis. And so uh, we are expanding or working on expanding our reach and trying to just help as many people as possible. So I'm coordinating lots of fun events like we'll talk about in a minute for Palmetto Giving Day and working on just fundraising so we can answer the call for help from as many families and individuals as possible. Yeah, no, it's a, a big undertaking, I know for sure. Fundraising in any manner is, and then, you know, having to have that on your shoulders where you're, you know, helping a, a large community. All right, so now that we understand a little bit about um, all the amazing things that you guys do in our community, I wanted to find out from you what this pandemic has had an impact or how it has had an impact on your day to day. I mean, what we had talked about before, these needs don't stop. So, what are some of your struggles or successes as you're navigating through this? And Sarah, I'm going to ask um, you to start with this, especially because, I mean, you guys work for people from the beginning. So I imagine there's still people looking to get diagnosed or be evaluated even through this, but then also there are therapies that are um, continually going on. Yeah, we had to, um, we had to change our sort of operations very quickly. So we put together our crisis management team and, went through a hundred hurdles of how we could continue to be able to provide some level of programming and support in a safe way for the children and adults that we serve. Um, we were very fortunate in that most of our team members who work with us wanted to be able to continue working. We did give people the option to not work if they would prefer not to. So we did lay off some people initially. Um, and then very quickly, we worked on how to social distance, how to change the way we serve children in our clinic space, and, um, and then how we change the way we serve them in homes, and um, really limited the amount of exposure by um, making caseloads smaller, so that our behavioral therapists were only seeing maybe one or two children instead of five or six every day. Um, and then our adult programs, very quickly, we got our Zoom license, uh, HIPAA compliant, and, um, and started our online classes, which have been highly successful. Um, and we're running project search classes online, employment classes online, 
We have two life skills classes every day online. And so we moved um, pretty quickly to be able to serve as many people as we could um, just in a different way. Yeah, I imagine. Well, that's great. I'm so glad to hear that it's, you know, being that successful and especially, you know, through the adults that they can continue to progress. Um, Carly, how about you? How has this changed the way that you've been doing things, especially, you know, going into homes and everything? How does that work? Yeah, absolutely. So um, my, with my business, we're small. It's myself and one other OT. So we haven't um, had, you know, the scale of changes hasn't been as large as, as these ladies. Um, so my OT, Megan, she's still seeing some clients one-on-one direct. And so there's definitely been some protocols put in place for that. Um, she definitely tries to see kids outside whenever possible and um, having them use their own equipment when they can um, and also um, increasing the the sanitizing protocol too. So um, there's definitely ways to make that work with the um, direct treatment. Um, I'm getting a notice that my internet connection is unstable. Can you guys hear me? Yep, you're still good. I'll let you know. Okay, okay. Um, So yeah, and then other than that, we've also, we have clients that have chosen to um, do telehealth services and that transition has been going amazingly well. you know, we've got that rolling with telehealth, it's going great. Now we're working on creating a virtual library so that in addition to the, um, over the video one-on-one session, we can also provide um, a virtual library for the clients to have access to throughout the week. We're creating videos, some videos that we've already had, organizing those and then creating new ones too. Um, So that's a big, um, that's definitely been a big undertaking and a big challenge because I'm not, um, I'm not the most tech savvy. So there's definitely uh, been a, it's been a big learning curve for me. So I imagine that will even, you know, in the future, be able to grow a lot of your business to be able to kind of reach out outside of our area. But also I would imagine um, being a parent to be able to pull back into that vault and, you know, kind of reinforce some of the things that you're teaching on a daily basis, right? Definitely. I think ultimately it's going to end up enhancing the services that we can provide. So there's definitely a lot of silver linings here as to what's going on. Um, it's definitely pushed us um, to, you know, start offering um, that type of service. But I think it's definitely going to enhance what we can provide and improve communication even more so, which is important. Yeah, very much so. Nicole, how about you over at Young Talkers? I know you had some struggles there at the beginning. Um, can you talk us through some of that? <laughs> Yeah. So we, of course, you know, the, the schools closed, so we weren't able to, you know, go to the schools, the daycares, the preschools, um, that kind of thing. In the very, very beginning, we were putting in lots of, you know, disinfecting protocols and closing the waiting rooms and, you know, doing all these things. And then I got to the point where, you know, they were saying, well, the children could be carriers and, and we wouldn't even know, you know, so you could not be exhibiting symptoms. And then I was like, uh oh, like, <laughs> so then we ended up basically just closing because in this state, we could not get our services covered under insurance for telepractice. So we pretty much our hands were tied, um, you know, kind of at that point. Um, in regards to like the insurance piece of it. So there was a lot of lobbying, um, you know, that happened and uh, with the different insurance companies and politicians and whatnot, just trying to um, see if they would give us an option to do telepractice, you know, during this time. Um, And we were successful in, uh, you know, kind of pushing some of that through. Partially, there's still stuff we're working on, but they have allowed us to kind of start doing some therapy um, with telepractice under insurance. So we basically have been training, uh, doing lots of training. We've gone to like uh, Sarah's talking about the HIPAA compliant Zoom. Um, And we've been putting all of our library together of our scanned in materials and that kind of thing. And so We've went this week, we launched uh, full into the teletherapy for all of our patients um, that, you know, were interested and, and, you know, wanted to do it. Um, And it's actually been really great. I mean, we have been having a lot of great sessions and it's really, um, you know, the the girls are having to talk the parents through a lot of things in therapy. And so it's, it's been great actually um, in getting even more hands-on parent involvement. Um, and we feel like is, you know, kind of like Carly was saying is really could potentially enhance what we're doing mm-hmm. and that relationship with our, our patients and our families. So, yeah, I think there's been a lot of positive to it. Yeah, that's great. And, you know, kind of coming around. Yeah, go ahead, Sarah. 
I was going to say, I, it's amazing uh, some of the results I think that we're having with telehealth. I mean, and, and I think you see it across all of these domains and um, our therapists are, you know, loving this sort of communication with families that maybe they didn't really have so much time before because people were so busy running from one thing to another. Um, but now they're home and they're able to jump on um, a video conference. We have this great time where they're really being able to learn more. And so we're really hoping that we'll be able to keep it. We like it. Um, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't replace everything in person, of course, but it's definitely something that I think has been an asset to all of us as providers. Yeah. And with that, I just, I mean, just as a question, I was like, you obviously are serving a community that aren't always the most uh, attention focused, I guess you would mm -hmm. say. So the telehealth, I mean, it's great to see that that is actually, I'm sure that was initially a thought in your reins that like, yeah. how is this going to work? Are, are these kids are going to sit in front of a screen and watch, but, um, and, and interact. So it seems like that's been working, right? Yeah. Definitely. We've had, we've had great. some great results, which were surprising, I think, for a lot of us. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's definitely working. And we, um, we kind of have been easing our way into it and starting with shorter sessions for that attention piece reason, starting with 30 minute sessions and then just kind of getting letting them acclimate to that and then build up to longer sessions as appropriate uh, per child. So um, we definitely are making it, it work as far as the attention piece goes. Yeah. Well, I know just with my six-year-old, she gets so excited when she has her own Zoom call because she sees me on, um, she sees my husband having to do some. So it's like, oh, I have a Zoom call. Like this is my time. Like you know, let me sit and enjoy it. Yeah, <laughs> I felt fun. so grown up about it. Um, Leslie, can you talk to us a little bit about how you've been still trying to reach out and you know, kind of service this community? Yeah, same as everybody else. It's actually been um, really wonderful. Um, I'm been working within the two life skill programs that we offer. So we offer two classes, one in the morning, three hours, one in the afternoon, three hours. We have about 10 to 12 uh, adults in each session. And honestly, uh, because of the focus, the attention, there's way more one-on-one -on -one, um, uh, communication. And it's been a huge success. I've been doing cooking classes online. We've been doing fitness classes online. We've brought in guest speakers um, from all different populations, um, both in the community and outside of the community that have been able to share job experiences. We've been doing yoga. Uh, we've had uh, chefs uh, from restaurants come in and give us tours of their kitchens and talk about their businesses and uh, you know, it's been great. And again, even with the adults, they're, a lot of their families are, or somebody of the, from the family has been home. So they've been actually able to witness what we're trying to instill um, in their children. And, um, and even though they're adults, you know, it, adults sometimes are hard, they're set in their ways, they have habits. So trying to change some of their habits. Um, I think it's been a little bit easier because we have the families involved and I've talked to at least three or four parents in the last couple of weeks that I probably would not have spoken to if we hadn't been on in the online forum. So I see it as a great asset and being newer with SOS, I was in the classroom for you know a few weeks before we we were uh, forced to go online, and I wasn't sure you know how it was going to work. But I see it as a huge asset to the program, and I'm really um, excited to be able to hopefully continue a virtual presence. You know, I want to get in the kitchen, hands on cooking with everybody, and planting. And we have a beautiful garden that we were going to set up, and we started a walking club at Doug Shaw Stadium, and you know, we want to do a health fair and we have all these huge plans that will need, you know, social interaction, but the actual focused learning, I think online has really been beneficial. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I feel like I need to be in all those classes. Like, no, I, I, <laughs> well, I come like join it. us. We'd love to have you as a guest speaker. So. Oh my goodness. I would love all that. I want to be a yeah. guest. Can I be a guest student? You could do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> someone to zoom in and give me cooking cooking yeah, lessons. I know, right? That's I know that you know it's got to be hard too I mean we all live with the you know the quarantine you know diet and stuff like that so trying to keep people on track I imagine 
having the parents listen in and, you know, being there, like they it kind of triggers back to them, like what you should have stock, what you should have on hand. Yeah. Well, I feel too that the outreach to the families is very big. It's huge, whether it's for the children or the adult, probably for the children a little bit more because, you know, the children have other issues that make it a little bit more difficult to communicate as far as nutrition goes. Um, so we would rely more on the families in the home environment to be able to support that. But, you know, it's hard for all of us. It's hard for me. I, my kitchen is right behind me. So, like, you know, not going into it every five minutes. So it really doesn't matter. You know, it's just a really important concept. And being home and stuck at home, I think it gives us a huge opportunity um, as a family unit to, to, you know, create different habits within the home environment, which benefits, benefits everybody. Yeah, for sure. All right, Stacy. Talk to me, girl, because I know that, you know, you've had some big plans for some fun events, some things going on, and that's usually how everyone raises money. And, you know, when we all shut down and everyone's home, you don't, you know, you, you honestly, you don't always think about the nonprofits and what they're going through and how they're, you know, being able to continue and to fundraise and, you know, a really big day coming up. So talk to me about how that progressed. Absolutely. So Palmetto Giving Day is our biggest fundraiser of the year. Uh, for those of you that may not be familiar, Palmetto Giving Day is a day of giving. Uh, this year, 52 of our local nonprofits are teaming up together and we're fundraising over a 36 hour period on May 5th, starting at midnight through noon on May 6th. And so we've been working on this for a long time, being our largest fundraiser. And we had lots of great events planned out in the community. And of course we had to cancel all of them. And then we pivoted to virtual online events. So I think what we have come up with, the community is going to love. We have two events that I'm super excited about. One is going to be a private online concert with Elise Testone from American Idol and Cicely Hennigan and Lily Joy from The Voice. So we're super excited about that. And then we're also doing a local online celebra uh, celebrity trivia night that Stephanie is going to play in. Um, and we also have Andre Davis, who's a former NFL player and a bunch of uh, other local guests from TV and radio. So that should be super exciting. Uh, trivia is at five o'clock on May 5th and the concert's at eight o'clock on May 5th. And you all can follow our Facebook page for details on all of the events at SOS Healthcare Inc. Yeah, my name should not be put with those names in an overall <laughs> umbrella of celebrity, <laughs> but I am really excited. Absolutely. And my team is excited, and I've told them all, I'm like, you need to come on. <clears throat> I'll have our link to donate through through my link um, on our page and everything. So if anybody wants to donate, starting Tuesday morning, you know, get on there and, and get it done, and you know, kind of help these individuals because you guys are providing such amazing services for our community and we definitely want to make sure that that is continuing for sure. So I wanted to ask, I know, I mean, some of you work well, like not well, I mean, some of you all work well together, but some of you, you know, work cl more closely together than others. So I just wanted to see how, how does that community help each other, um, especially in times like that, you know, referring patients, <clears throat> excuse me, and, you know, kind of keeping those connections um, close. Um, Sarah, can you touch on any of that? Yeah, I mean, men, men, most of the children that we serve are receiving, you know, services from other providers too, right? Especially in our ABA programs, our younger children. So Carly may be serving them um, for occupational therapy and Nicole serving them for speech. So a lot of the referrals are back and forth between our agencies. And, um, you know, a lot of times if people are advocating for ABA therapy for a child, they're seeing an OT or speech, Nicole is um, always good at calling and saying, hey, I've got this kid. They really need to be on the top of your list. Um, this is why, and we, tr you know, we really try and work together to make sure that we fill that gap. So we do share a lot of the children um, through different you know, services that we provide. We might not always get to communicate as much ourselves because we're running businesses and we're busy, but we try, Nicole and I definitely try and get together every sort of corner or so and have lunch and plan a little bit about what we're doing. And um, we probably should start bringing Carly into that too now. She's really up and running with her own business. 
um, because it's just nice to be connected with each other. And um, I mean, we're really serving the same children uh, just in a different way. So working together is really important. Yeah, I can, I can definitely see that. I mean, and you guys are all amazing to like, you know, kind of group together and brainstorm and see how you can, you know, help our community even more. It's, it's fantastic. Um, and then I did want to ask real quick, because we didn't talk about this before we kind of move on, but Sarah, can you touch on the progression of Oak Tree Farms or kind of share the, with the community of like what Oak Tree Farms is so that they know even more so, you know, when they're fundraising, what are some of, some yeah. of these funds are going to go towards? Um, so Oak Tree Farm is a community that we're developing in Conway um, for people with autism and intellectual disabilities. It's a low affordable income uh, project, you know, that our adults really got together. And when we started talking about, you know, where do you think you might want to live one day? What's going to happen if your parents are not here? Um, they never really thought about those things. We don't really talk about it. It's such a taboo kind of subject. And it's really just expected that families will take care of their person forever, which they do. But at one day, they're not going to be here. And then what's the plan? And so we really started talking to them and they came up with this idea that they wanted to live together somewhere in a community where they could be with their friends still and keep these connections that they have through our programs and the other things that we do. And, and our families really liked the idea too. And so we've spent quite a long time, as you know, trying to get through much red tape and much planning on how to build a community. Um, where are we right now? The first house is being built um, right now. And um, the deadline uh, for our grant for this house is July. So we are very hopeful that this first house will be built in July. We are working on a grant application for the next phase of this development. And we're asking for quite a significant amount of money. Our goal is to build 24 units in the next um, phase. And, and we would be able to house about 50 people if we're able to get the funding to do that. So we decided our go slow plan was not good enough. We have 250 <laughs> people on the wait list. And this going slow, trying to be careful and cautious is not working for us. And it's not working for all the people that are waiting. And so, you know, fundraising is big for Oak Tree Farm right now. Grant money is out there and we are just pushing and pushing. We need to get the 250 people on our wait list in a place where they would like to be living. And this is just a very small group of people in probably 4,000 in Horry County alone. Um, and then we're working to help develop a, in Charleston. There's a nonprofit we're working with to help develop a project very similar to Oak Tree Farm there. And also talking to some folks in Greenville about how to help with theirs. So our goal is build ours and then really start helping others because there is no plan for housing for any of the people that we're all serving. There's no plan, there's nowhere for them to go. So as we work towards independence and we keep pushing independence and employment as they get older, we, we've got to have something in place for them to be able to you know, live and have that choice. Everyone wants to sort of grow up and have their own life at some point. And our folks do too. And we owe it to them to help, you know, provide that in some way. The government's not going to do it. We have to do it. Yeah. When I love that, I know that you, I mean, I was, you know, lucky enough to be, you know, there on the, on the beginning with you when you were kind of coming up these plans and you really pioneered this in our area. And there's nothing like this. Um, what down in Florida, there's something kind of similar, but there's yeah. nowhere, what you're saying is people don't understand that there's nowhere for these adults to go and live on their own in a manner that they still have support and they have, you know, they can feel supported and they have tr easy transportation to be able to have jobs and to be able to, and, and it's not them there. I mean, we've, I've talked about this with other people. This is not them there and just living for free. Like they're there, they have rent, they yeah. have bills to pay. And then, you know, yeah. they take care of themselves, they cook and they clean and they do all of that just like anybody else would, but it's just in a community base that they can have that support. 
yeah. and be able to still have some of the services that you offer on those things. So I'm excited that your first one's going to be done, but yeah, Me I mean, <laughs> kind of like, we had talked, you have about 90 something on your initial plan, but you know, 200 on the wait list. So we definitely need to progress this further. So donate, donate, donate and fundraise. Yes. <laughs> as much yes, as you. Thank you. We're pushing hard. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, one, uh, one kind of question I always love to ask on these is, um, you guys have shared kind of what you're doing in the community and how you're helping, but what is something that you have learned about yourself throughout this? Like just, I know it's been such a weird time and there's been things about myself that I've learned that I haven't really loved and I wanted to change, <laughs> you know, I always knew that I had a little bit of a short string on, you know, patience and I've had to really work on that, um, being a, a mom and a teacher and a cook and a cleaner and all of that all in one under one roof and not getting out. But um, Nicole, I'll ask you first. <laughs> you seemed a little. <laughs> um, potentially like that next. I am a little controlling. <laughs> um, and that I have no control. I, I have realized that. Um, it, it's been very challenging for me because, you know, I'm always trying to keep my ducks in a row and, you know, make sure this is done, make sure that's done. And, and this just kind of blew my world up, to be honest with you, as to, wow like i just completely have no control over what's going on right now so um i think that was a big um lesson learned for me um that you know i kind of live in this world where i make myself feel like i have control over things when i you know really don't um but you know honestly like it has also gave me a lot of time with my kids which has been great um and you know being able to to be with home home with them i mean it has been kind of stressful trying to do juggle it all um but it's it has been nice to have you know more time with them and you know i just want to give a big shout out to my to my young talkers team and family because they have really stepped up um we we or took this challenge on with the online teletherapy and uh, they have just rocked it just absolutely rocked it. And I mean, they've worked so hard. We've really put a lot of work into this and training and time and um, they're doing awesome. And the families are super happy and we're seeing great success. So just a big shout out to my team. Yeah, that's awesome. Carly, what about you? Well, I've always been a believer that where there's a will, there's a way. But um, in this case, I've learned that, you know, sometimes you just need to ask for help. You can't uh, reinvent, reinvent the wheel, you know, you just got to reach out to those people that um, know what they're doing, you know, especially when it comes to the virtual space who, who've been there before and just um, rely on those that might have a little more experience with this kind of thing. So um, yeah, definitely reaching out for help. Um, I'm just so thankful to be a part of this greater community. There's so many awesome therapists, teachers, and and parents out there supporting our kids with needs. And I'm just um, just grateful to be a part of it. Definitely takes a village. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can imagine that for sure. Yeah. Um, Leslie, tell me something you've learned about yourself. Um, well, I've learned how I'm incredibly blessed I am right now to be in the situation that I'm in and that um, timing is everything. And the fact that the way that things have worked out for me, that I've been now able to join this amazing organization and be able to contribute um, all that I know and learned and will continue to learn and being able to, you know, I don't, my, my kids are old, you know, and out of the house and I have the time and I have the headspace and I have the tools. Um, so the fact that, you know, I'm able to use it in this forum, I feel incredibly blessed. And I, and, and like Carly, I, where there is a will, there is a way and just trusting, I feel like, um, just trusting in knowing that, you know, everything happens for a reason and there's going to be some good things that have, are coming out of this, um, with as many bad things that might've happened as well. So I'm just grateful. I'm really grateful right now. That's a good one. I love that. That's how I feel. I was like, I felt like grateful and appreciative that I was able to have a job that I was able to still work through it. I was able to, you know, be home with my kids and keep them safe. So and when you're in the thick of it, you know, the gratitude is not usually something that you reach for, but it's definitely a, a good asset to think of. Stacy, how about you? Um, so a couple of things 
we're feeling all the feels right now being locked up on what week six now at home with all of our families, but just really the power of positive thinking and what you think about, you bring about in your life. And it's really easy to get caught up in all the negative media. Uh, we had to turn the TVs off in our house because that was just really affecting our mood and creating anxiety and behaviors that I just didn't like in myself, you know, and to see in my kids and my family, right? So I kind of had to shut that off and switch to more of a positive mindset. And what you choose to see in these situations um, really becomes reality. And what I like to see is that so many people in our community are coming together to support one another and people are good. And there's so much good in the world right now. And especially with us having having to pivot for Palmetto Giving Day to these online fundraisers. Our business partners in the community, like you guys at Carolina Revolution and even Nicole at Young Talkers, you guys have been great business partners to us. And even in some surprising ways, people coming through, Johnny D's put together a fundraiser with uh, Wicked Inlet Seafood for us based on her amazing trigger fish plate that she last weekend so good if you guys haven't tried it um and that was just like a wonderful surprise that came to us uh in the community and we just are super grateful for all the help we're getting yeah that's awesome how about you sarah well i think initially with the sort of major shock of sort of everything happening so quickly um it took us a minute, you know, it's sort of like, oh my gosh, what are we talking about here? It's hard to sort of wrap your head around what's going to happen. And this business that you've built for so long, that's doing well, you sort of go, wow, what are we going to do? We have to change everything we know. And I have to, as a leader, get everyone to change with me. And we have, you know, 50 stuff that you sort of go and all the families and I have to believe that we're going to be able to change what we do, make it okay, and roll out this new way of life. And I've got to get them to come with me and, and know it's going to be okay. So I think in those moments, I, you know, you waver a little bit and then you put your big girl panties on and you get out there and you encourage them to do the same. And our crisis management team, we sort of put together in a hurry and, I mean, I looked at the creativity of our team and the amazing people that work for us. And it was like, okay, we've got this. Everyone's cool. We're going to roll it out. We'll meet every few days and we'll change what we have to change and we'll make it work. And I think so the, so the sort of flexibility of the people I work with, I think because of the population we work with and I live with, I live with two men with autism, um, their behavior changes all the time. I have to adapt to whatever's happening. And I think that our people that work with us are so used to that, that they adapt a lot easier than people that don't usually have to deal with change in their life every day. And so I sort of see that flexibility as a huge asset to our company yeah. and to the creativity of the people that work with us. And so, you know, I feel like we're sort of sailing a little bit now after really having some pretty tough moments. Um, but I think that's when I take away from it, the creativity, the flexibility and the, and the willingness to always want to help our families no matter what's happening. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I love that. I mean, you guys definitely all pivot every day. You know, you yeah. adjust to what's happening and, you know, how to make the current situation work yeah and you know which is a huge asset for, for this time well since we're coming to an end here and i'm glad that we'd be able to get this because you guys have no idea i don't know where you live carly but it looks beautiful outside your window if you guys can see what's going on in my window <laughs> i'm surprised <laughs> you know, we're just that through, through, it? Didn't it, Sarah? <laughs> um, but i wanted to give each of you um a last moment to let us know how we can how we can support you how the community how our viewers can help um how and how they can reach you um especially if someone's watching and they feel like they might need they have a person in their lives that might need to be like in the beginning process of this or they've moved here and they don't know you know where to get services so you could just kind of give us a quick of um how we can help you and then how people can find you and you know what your uh, 
phone number, social media, whatever it is, um, where they can find you. So I'm going to let Nicole, you can go ahead and go first with this one. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if, if, you know, I think if the viewers know anyone, um, d adults or children um, that have any speech language, feeding, reading concerns, um, you know, to let them know um, about us that we're here and we, you know, are providing services for the Grand Strand. Um, our website's youngtalkers.com. Our phone number is 843-457-1053. And they can also email me personally if they have questions. Sometimes parents just, they're like, I'm not really sure, you know, if my child needs this or not. Um, so I have parents email me a lot too. And I'm always happy to get those emails and answer questions. I even have them come in sometimes to the office so we can kind of sit down and chat about what the concerns are. Um, my email is Nicole at youngtalkers.com. Like writing all this down. I'll link some of this too on our um, in our feed, and you guys can kind of share them out. But um, Carly, how about you? Yeah. So um, so we're small, and we rely on word of mouth. Um, so you know, if anyone can just spread the word and just um, let the community know that we're out there. Um, you know, there's a lot of parents right now that are definitely witnessing firsthand some challenges, possibly with this new homeschooling endeavor. So. Um, if any of those um, parents have some questions, they might be seeing some um, new concerns coming to light. Um, we do offer free screenings, um, so parents can access that. They can email me at motivatekids at gmail.com um, to start the screening um, process. You can also um, request a screening on our website at motivatekids.com. Um, we also have a Facebook page where we're posting some fun activities for kids to do to incorporate learning and, and moving. We have a couple of Facebook groups. Um, one is a chalk challenge toolbox, which um, has been a lot of fun. Um, you know, ways to use sidewalk chalk to incorporate learning and moving, visual perceptual skills, all that kinds of things. And that's a, a public group uh, for anyone to join. And um, parents have jumped on board and been posting their own ideas. So it's really been fun, the, the interaction there, for sure. Yeah, that's cute. That's how I'm going to get on that one. I love that. We love being outside with chalk. So <laughs> something additional to them, my stick figures would probably be helpful <laughs> to my kids. <laughs> I got the stick figures and the rainbows down. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Um, Sarah, you kind of talked about how we can reach out to you as well. Um, well, the best way to reach, we have sort of an office line, which is 843-449-0554. If you want to connect with me, um, just call my cell phone, 843-446-4106. And then um, Stacy can tell you all of our Facebook, Instagram, all the other things, website. We're working on a new website. She can give you all that contact information too. So you can get in touch in multiple ways. All right, well, then Stacey, take it away there. <laughs> That's a great lead in. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so at SOS, we are essential healthcare workers and we would really appreciate and love your support on Palmetto Giving Day. So the easiest way you can help us is on May 5th. You can go to palmettogivingday.org and you can look for the SOS Healthcare homepage click on that and then you can donate and you can help us answer the call for help. You can reach us on our Facebook page at SOS Healthcare. Our website is sos-healthcare.com. Uh, you're welcome to call me on my cell phone if uh, you have questions or if you're interested in partnering and helping us in our mission. My number is 843-653-8319. And you can also email me at stacy.lyon at sos-healthcare.com. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate your support on May 5th. Awesome. And then Leslie, I know most of it would probably be going through SOS, but for any yeah. additional. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, you know, um, I'm part of the SOS family. And if anybody's interested in, you know, what I do within that, um, and how I can help them outside of that, you know, definitely reach me through SOS. We're really looking to expand the holistic health program. We really want to make this something that, you know, is a forever program within all the other programs. And, you know, if the community uh, 
of, you know, like the food industry community, if they want to support with, you know, donations for cooking ingredients and all that, that's great. But everything really needs to go through SOS. And but I'm happy to answer any questions. I'm all over Facebook. Um, and I'm super user friendly. So just just feel like you want to reach out, go ahead. Love that for sure. Well, I, for one, want to thank each of you for what you do on an everyday basis. And especially now kind of being able to pivot and adapt and kind of move through this time and still be able to service, um, it sounds like even better, um, our special needs community, because there's a lot of them are very special to my heart. And I, um, I'm just really, a, have a lot of gratitude in my heart for all of you and, and what you do on an everyday basis. Um, I want to make sure that everyone, you know, if you need assistance, reach out. Don't hesitate to ask. Um, what Carly had said is true. I was like, a lot of parents may, you know, almost have blinders on sometimes and they send their kids to school and everything's fine. But when they're seeing things at home on a, on a firsthand basis of kind of learning or anything that might seem out of the normal, reach out. There's, there's no reason that you can't ask questions and kind of find out, you know, how you can help your kids progress and be successful in the future um, as much as possible. So make sure you donate on May 5th to uh, Palmetto Day Giving for sure. Um, I know she gave a website, but just click on the link that I post. That would be fine. <laughs> and donate through my link because that all goes to, to my uh, my running score. But in all in all, um, kidding aside, just you know, donate in any way possible because we are all here to, to help the nonprofits in our area, and especially SOS and everything that you guys are doing. So I just want to thank all of our viewers for tuning into this meeting with Extraordinary Minds. And we're excited to bring more to you next week. Um, we have a couple ones, uh, fun ones planned for you. Um, so just join us on Tuesday and Thursday next week at 910 right here. We're gonna be talking on Tuesday to some quick service um, members of our community and seeing how their business has changed. Um, I know we've all driven through some of the quick service restaurants in our area and seen that they've been busy, but I know that they've had a lot of struggles um, that they've had to deal with and how they're doing um, to make sure that their employees and their uh, guests stay safe. So we will see you Tuesday at 910 right here on Facebook. Thank you, ladies, so much. We really Thank appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.